Okay, we're going to look at Ohm's Law today. Ohm. So before we get into Ohm's Law proper, we have to do just some basic definition stuff first. So let's talk about charge. Do, 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 do. So charge is the amount of electrical charge, right? So it's a measure, measure of electric electric uh, charge sorry okay now this is going to be done using the coulomb okay and it's capital C just like how you'd measure length using a meter or an inch or a foot you're going to measure charge using the coulomb okay a coulomb is very big very big and an electron does not have a lot of coulombs so for example one electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs that's equal to point one about that many coulombs all right, so basically it's just how much charge you have. But, but what you should think about it though, is if you have more coulombs, you're going to have more electrons, All right? So, well, electrons. So, you know, each electron has one portion of the charge and if you have more charge, you have more coulombs. Ta-da. Okay, which takes us to voltage. Ta-da. So voltage, what it is, is it's the energy per charge. Okay, so just to give you the definition, you're not going to use this formula really, but voltage is equal to work per ah, no I don't want to do that voltage is equal to joules per coulomb okay so joules is your unit of energy and this is your unit of charge okay so now let's just uh, think about a concrete example here you've got a battery let's use the big version of a battery here this is the positive side, this is the negative side. If you connected the battery like this to a light bulb, what's gonna happen is there's going to be electrons that leave the battery out of the negative side and travel around through this filament here doo -doo 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 -doo, that makes the light and then into the top so this is the current this is the real current right this is the way the electrons are traveling now the electrons want to do this so they are going to give off energy as they're doing this now a normal double-a battery has about 1.5 volts to it okay so let's say that you have a lot of electrons let's say one coulombs worth of electrons okay if you have one coulombs worth going around the circuit that's 1.5 volts and one coulombs which means out of this you're going to have 1.5 joules of energy. All right. So th the more volts you have, the more energy you get for every electron. That's what it's talking about. All right. So it doesn't care how many electrons you have, because if I have a wimpy battery here, this is a mystery battery. It's only got point one volts but if I have more electrons running through it I can give off the same amount of energy 
It just takes more electrons to do it because there's less energy in each electron. All right? So that's what voltage is. Okay? Now we're ready for Ohm's law. Okay? Ohm's law comes from a wonderful scientist. Can you guess what his last name was? That's right. His last name was Ohm. So what Ohm's law tells you is it tells you that voltage is equal to current times resistance. V equals IR. Okay, so these letters, voltage, or V stands for volts, voltage, and that's measured in volts. I stands for current. Yes, they use current for, or they use the letter I for current. Why don't they use the letter C? I don't know because it was taken with capacitance, I guess. Current uses the unit amps, which is capital A. And then R stands for resistance. Oh, sorry. OK, resistance uses a different letter. It uses this letter. Try to draw a good one for you for the first one. All right, so that's the unit that we use. This unit is called an ohm. I wonder why. Now, that's not what the letter is called. The letter is called a, this is a capital, omega. All right, it's a Greek letter. I wanted to tell you what it's called in case you wanted, you needed to look it up or whatever like that. It's called a capital Omega. You can get it on your keyboard if you hold down the Alt key and you press 9, 6, oh, I'm sorry, that's the lowercase. You press 2, 3, 4, and that will give you one of those. All right, they're tough to draw. You might have to practice it a few times. Well, good luck. Anyway, so this is what we're going to use in a circuit to figure out any one of these. Oh, one note about current. We didn't mention this before because it didn't matter yet, but what an amp is, is an amp is a coulomb per second, all right? So, you know, remember a coulomb is just a certain amount of electrons. So if you have a high current, you've just got more electrons traveling every instant, all right? So that's every second. That's what an amp is. Okay? An amp is huge very often. Whoop, often that we see something like milliamps, right? Remember a milliamp is equal to 0 0.001 amps. All right? That's what's on your cell phone charger, for example. It uses a certain amount of milliamps. Otherwise, it would fry you. Let's do a practice problem or two. A small light bulb is connected to a six volt battery and draws two amps of current. What is the resistance of the bulb? Nice, so we're gonna do V is equal to I times R. Voltage is for V, so V is six because that's the voltage of the battery. Now there's two amps of current, so that's going to go right there, times R, solving for R. R is equal to 3. We should put a unit there because we always put a unit in this class. So it is going to be 3 ohms. So awesome. Let's do one more. A motor with an operating range of 32 and 3 quarters is connected to a voltage source. The current in the current, or the current in the circuit is 1.5. What's the voltage of the source? Ew, gross. For this class, please don't ever use fractions like that unless you're measuring something in distance-wise, then you'll have to. We're gonna go 32.75 for anything electrical. Okay, so please uh, pause the video and see what you get, and then I'll help make sure you're right. Oh, I didn't think it'd take you that long. Anyways, V is equal to I times R. The voltage is unknown but I is equal to 1.5, and the resistance is 32.75. So we're going to get out our fun calculating machine and do 1.5 times 32.75, and we get 
49.125. And this is going to be in volts. Please make sure you put a unit. You're going to get dinged if you ever come back to class for not putting a unit for stuff like this because this is real world applicable things you need to have a unit all right so that takes us to there we've got a practice sheet for you and then uh tomorrow we're